Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Business Spotlight interview series. Today it's my great pleasure to welcome Zara Hamill. Zara is the owner of Moi Boutique in Bangor, Northern Ireland. Zara, how are you? I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thanks. Look, why don't you share with us who you are, what you do and how long you've been doing it for? Um, so I'm Zara. Um, I own Moi Boutique on High Street in Bangor, as you've just said. We opened that five years ago. Um, I had my son and I think I lost my mind. And I thought, I need to get a clothes shop because I don't know what else I'm going to do. I can't go back to work. And I opened the shop and that's been it, really. We've kind of gone from there and strength to strength, hopefully. Fantastic. That's brilliant. So um, maybe a ridiculous question, but who's your ideal customer? Um. Well, anyone who wants to come in, really, like we have a real varying age range, you know, about early 30s, up to mid 80s. I met a lady last week who says, I'm 85 and I can still shop in here. And I said, that's brilliant. That's what we want. Fantastic. But we love someone who wants to come in and say, I'm going somewhere. Can you help me? Or I need a few new bits. Can you help me? And we're just absolutely, yeah, me and the girls just love pulling together outfits. And anyone who's got a wee bit of excitement for it themselves, Oh, we just love the feeling at the end when someone's so happy that they've been in and got themselves something nice. Gives us a buzz. Hopefully they leave with a wee buzz too. So that's the ideal customer, but anyone's welcome. Fantastic. So uh, that means my wife qualifies. I'll have to bring her around to Bangor. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> we have an online store too. Email me, oh. I can help that way. Oh, have you? Fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. that's great. So uh, does somebody just Google... Moi Boutique or moiboutique.co.uk and you can find us there or we're on socials quite a lot so socials is a is a big thing for the shop really so yeah. um, a lot on Instagram so definitely if you see something there we can definitely help her with sizing and bits and pieces uh, fantastic look appreciate it so what's <laughs> your biggest learning been since you uh I guess stepped out five years ago and started your own business um I don't know lots of things learn every day but not to take it all too personally if something doesn't work or someone doesn't like something move on from it you know, things change really 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 quickly yes. in the way the business works and fashion changes quickly and that person may like it today but not like it tomorrow so just move on and don't get too hung up sure. on things because at the start I was thinking oh no what if they don't like that what if they don't come back well that that that's their that's their choice not to come back you yeah. can only do what you can do. So there'll be someone else who'll come through the door as long as I'm doing okay. Very, very good. And is this something that you always wanted to do from when you're a little kid or? Um, oh, this... I always used to play with clothes. Um, no, well, yes, I know. I wanted to be a fashion journalist. I went to university to study to be a journalist and I went, then I went down a film and TV sort of path. And then this came about really, like I said, after I had my son and, I thought I can't go back to working in film and TV anymore. It's too long hours. I can't be away. And I thought I'm going to try something different. And we did this. But um, I've always loved clothes. So yes yeah. and no. Fantastic. And uh, what would you say has been the biggest issue that you've had to overcome? Um, I'm thinking time frame. if you just opened uh, five years ago, there's yeah. obviously one big thing in there <laughs> oh yeah the c word <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well that was obviously a big downfall but you know what i think it might have helped us in a in a way also because we closed yeah. and everyone was staying local but i would go down and i would open the shutters of the shop most days so people were out on their daily walks and they seen it and then i kind of took to social media more than yes. so i was able to sort of build my business up over socials over that time and then when we reopened we reopened really 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 strongly um, Fantastic. footfall isn't great in Bangor um, but that's something that we've kind of had to overcome but using social media has been a big tool for that and the people in Bangor have been really supportive so it's good and people travel to us and stuff trying to we're just trying to make it more of a destination store brilliant that's that's fantastic and uh, you're not the first person that I've interviewed that um, I guess had success with going online and doing socials through the, the yeah. pandemic. So uh, that's, that's, that's brilliant news. That's, that's so good to hear. Yeah, something good out of COVID. Yeah, totally. So what have you learned about yourself during this this journey? 
Uh, I'm fully nuts. Um, <laughs> that I can't sit still. I'm always thinking, what else can we do? Can we do this? Could we do this event? Could we do this? Um, I, I am a bit of a control freak, so I am trying to be a bit better at giving bits and, st and stuff over to other people to do, but yeah. I, I am quite controlling, but I'm also very high energy. <laughs> Very, very good. So uh, you're you're the buzz in the room. Uh, well, it can be. And then sometimes in the shop, yes, at home, I'm like, oh, get that done. Do your homework. <laughs> buzz kill. Very, very good. So um, what, what's been the most surprising aspect of owning your own business? Um, that I love the shop so much. I had the intention when I started that... I'll set this up six months to a year. I'll go back to work. I'll put someone else into this. But I love it. I love going there every day. I love chatting to the customers. And the friendships that I've built out of it have been amazing. It, it's just, it's a really nice community we've built. And I never expected that from it at all. I just I just thought it was going to be a business. But it's more than that to me. It really is. Fantastic. That's, uh, that's, that's so great. And, uh, you know, it has to be one of the most important things for somebody's career, whether it's a job or running their own business, that that they love it and enjoy it. You yeah, know, no, I far do. Too, I far do. too many people nowadays, you know, they go to work somewhere nine to five or whatever it happens to be yeah. uh, to pay the bills at the end of the month. And I know. there's I no enjoyment. Help. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's brilliant to hear. So, Sarah, who inspired you or still inspires you in the business world? Um, do you know who I think is amazing? Trini Woodall. Um, now, do you know Trini from Trini and Susanna from, from years ago? And she has reinvented yes. herself so many times. Yeah. Um, now she's got Trini London. She's like, she's humongous. And she is just, she is so energetic. And I think she's fabulous for everything she's done. She really is brilliant. And do you have any sort of like uh, favorite books, or are you more in, you're because you're maybe into socials and more online? You know, you've got a good few years younger than me, so you're much more adapted probably to podcasts and things like that. There, are you a book reader? Or are you into, into podcasts for motivation and inspiration? Well, um, I like a bit of my therapist ghosted me. It's not really um motivational. But... <laughs> I like a bit of Vogue Williams and Joanne McNally telling me the chat. Um, but you know Stephen Bartlett's podcast is really good. I actually listened to his um audio book the past couple of walks I've been out on and it's brilliant. So I really, really like Stephen Bartlett, the way he talks to people, but the fact that he listens so much and he asks questions in a very normal way, the ones that you're kind of all thinking to yourself, like, but why did you do that? Yeah. He asks it. So I, I really I really enjoy his ones. Yeah, he's really great. Um, mm -hmm. Action Coach every year have an event over in England that's called mm -hmm. BizX. It's one of the big, biggest uh, business events. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Bartlett spoke at it last year. So oh, I'm sure year. that was amazing. So, yeah, excellent. Uh, this year, I think uh, Deborah Meaden's one of the speakers. Oh, yeah, she's uh, really cool too. You know, so a uh, couple, of, couple of dragons passing through there. Ah. So um, what does the future look like for both yourself Um. Moi, Boutique, and uh, the family and the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are actually in the throes of opening up a trainer store in Bangor. So totally opening up a, a new shop um, across the road. It's a bit of a pop-up and we'll see how it goes. There's going to be just solely trainers. So it's me and my partner. So it's me men's and women's this one um, called Snakes. We're working on the minute getting the shop ready and it should be open in April. So it's going to be you know, like brands like Hoth and Gola, but also we'll have some sort of more specialist Nikes and things like that for those yeah. real trainer heads. But yeah, yeah we're yeah. expanded in slightly different directions as well. But um, I would love Moi to grow online, definitely. Uh, fa definitely. Fantastic. And what, what do you see as the big challenges going forward? Um, <laughs> my spending is out of control sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do, do, do you mean do, do you mean from the business or personal? Oh, both. Uh, I just I just love bringing in new brands and stuff, but um, yeah, yeah. Some I sometimes have to rein myself back in again and calm down. But probably the biggest challenges will be 
spending money in correct places for online growth and things like that. And yes. I hope I hope we have no more challenges over the next year or two because there's just been so much with the cost of living and COVID, obviously. So I, things can only get better, can't they? Uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Things can only get better. Yeah. Uh, the future's so bright you've got to We're wear start singing. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say or what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about going into business for themselves don't overthink it too much because the more you go round and round in your head the more you're going to talk yourself out of it if yeah. you have a clear vision of what you want to do don't let anyone talk you out of it you if you know you have enough money to sustain it that if it doesn't work don't be too proud. Back out of it if you if 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 you if it's not going to work, back out. But go for it as much as you can. Don't let anyone play in it. Brilliant. And uh, I know for this last question that I'm going to ask you, uh, you'll not have to turn the clock back very far, or as I would have to. Turn the clock back. <laughs> I, I think I, you're having a like good glow light going on around me here. <laughs> I, I I would have to turn it back uh, a few decades. What's the best advice you would give to yourself if you were eighteen again? Um, take every opportunity just take every opportunity and travel and, and see the world and make your decision after that brilliant advice totally uh, I have had the, been fortunate enough and had the pleasure of traveling so much the world and I would recommend it to anybody so that's a, a brilliant piece of advice thank you like, Sarah, really appreciate you taking time out of your busy yet fun-filled <laughs> week. And uh, I wish moi all the very, very best. Thank you very and much. And also for your 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 new venture, Sneaks. Yeah. Uh, look forward to hearing about that. Uh, and uh, hopefully see you really soon. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so, so much. Good. No, thank, thank you. you. Really appreciate it. Bye. Bye.